check this out. So if you've been in a manufacturing environment for a long time, especially if you've ran a lathe for a long time, chances are you've sat in front of a machine, you have pulled apart up to a turret, shut the door, hit the green button, and then you did that over and over and over again, right? So but here, we wanna show you guys how to manufacture just a little bit different, right? We wanna teach you not only to make parts, not only to make lots of parts, but to make lots of parts efficiently. We have an LNS quick load bar feeder right here, and we're gonna show you high high volume, high efficiency manufacturing. And one more thing, I was talking to the big guy and he's giving me permission to give something away. Might be some tooling, might be a pair of calipers, might be this bar feeder. It's not the bar feeder, but stick around to the end and I guarantee you we're gonna give you guys a chance to go home with something pretty sweet. So let's get to it. All right, so we've already set up the lathe over here with all the tools that we're gonna need to machine this part. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get into the setup of the bar feeder. So first thing, kind of nice, we gotta slide this right out of the way. Makes it nice and easy. So the stock we're gonna be machining is 1.5 inches in diameter. Down here, we have a draw tube of 3.2 inches in diameter. So because of that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a spindle liner in there, keep that bar nice and secure. Now, before you install these, you wanna make sure that your draw tube is nice and clean. You don't wanna damage these spindle liners by putting it in a draw tube full of chips. All right, see how lined up we got on our holes? Not too shabby. All right, so one of the things that I know about this spindle liner is it's actually a little bit short, and I'm gonna be trying to use as much stock as I can so lucky for us though, we have a Mark Forge 3D printer in there. I went ahead and drew up a little bushing to kind of extend this liner. And Trevor went ahead and printed it up for me. And we're gonna install that on the other side. All right, so this is our spindle liner extension that Trevor printed for us. Again, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but our parts are only one inch in length. And so this is gonna allow me to make a few extra parts. So now we're gonna go ahead and adjust our jaws to grab our 1.5 inch diameter stock. All right, pretty easy to do with our quick change jaws. Thank you, Shunk. Pretty much good to go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a trip back to the bar feeder and kind of show you how to get her set up real quick. So first things first, we're gonna bring her into place. Okay, lock her down. We got a whole bunch of Erdolite. It's a plastic type material, but we can't do any bar feeding without any bars. So let's go ahead and get those loaded up. One of the things that makes this bar feeder pretty nice actually is that it's a pretty quick setup, right? You can have somebody come in, drop this on the floor, get it installed and be up and running that day. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our control, sometimes known as a pendant. There are three parameters that you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with when setting up the bar feeder. The end of bar position tells the machine when to load a new bar. It basically tells you when you're out of usable length. So we'll go ahead and set it right behind the jaws. So the next position we're gonna set is the top cut position. This position tells you how far your material sticks out in front of your jaws after it's parted off. So for example, if you wanted say 500 thousandths of material left after you parted your part off, you would set that with your top cut position. Now the final position is your feed out length. This is the amount of material that you actually feed out per part and it consists of three different values. The amount that you face off, your part length, and the amount you part off. In this case, that's 1.148. All right, with those three parameters set, your bar feeder is basically ready to start pushing parts. All right, 
So with this setup here, you can see we have a conveyor collecting our parts, but there are several products, whether it's, you know, a robot or a Royal Rotor Rack or something like that that can collect more parts that will help you get the real prize, and that's lights out machining, right? That's what we're kind of looking for. We want to be able to set up our bar feeder, we want to be able to set up our machine with the right tools and the right process. We want to go home and we want to come back and have parts that are already machined, ready to go, ready to be paid for. All right, so there you have it. Probably one of the lowest cost entries to turn your manufacturing process fully automated. And make sure you guys tune into part two where we're gonna show you the tips and tricks and the different ways that we help manufacture this part over and over again, hands-free. Pretty cool, right? Not near as cool as what I'm gonna give you guys today, which is a pair of Mitsutoyo Digimatic Calipers zero to six inch. Now to get these, you guys gotta go ahead, comment down below, Tell us why you deserve them. You work hard, you're killing it, you're providing for your family, your company, whatever it is. Let us know why you deserve these calipers and somebody's gonna get them. So again, thank you guys for joining us. We got our Doosan Puma, we got our LNS Quick Load Bar Feeder. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next time.